so I've changed a lot under the hood, but it might look like nothing on the surface. So just like before, we have the rotation, the jumps, the walking. Okay. Before I talk about the code, let me just tell you the general direction that I'm taking. I've created a state machine so that I can define many different physics states that the player can be in. So here, if I look at the folder, individual states, we have things like check ground, free fall, landing, on ground, and you can have as many as you want. So first we begin with the check state, and all it does is check whether the player is on the ground or in midair. So if the player is in the air, we go into the fall state. If the player is on the ground, we go into the ground state. If the player falls, it's going to eventually land, and by landing, you're back to the ground state. If you hit the jump button, you jump up, and eventually the gravity is going to make you fall again, so back here. So instead of having thousands and thousands of if statements in the player controller, all we now care about is which state we're in and which state we want to transition to. When I write code or fix code, I can pick a state and focus down on that state, and by not having to worry about other states other than the transition, I increase my chance of writing better code. This is a lot easier to manage than having a bunch of scripts all mixed up in the player controller. So if I look at the player controller again, we just have the state processor. This is just something that processes each state. And all we got to now do is update the states. I'm not going to go into the fundamental ideas of state machines. You can just Google that. But if you're confused, you can always reach me on my Discord server. I have the links below. For now, let me move on. I have the physics state, which is the abstract class that each of the concrete physics state inherits from. Every state has a reference to the player controller. The proc state fixed update function gets called on every fixed update. Proc state update gets called on every update. On enter gets called once every time you enter a state. If I look at the state processor, this is a script that actually handles the transitions. Init processor is called when a state is entered for the first time. This should be more like init state. Let me rename that. Initialize state. So when this happens, we create an empty game object, put it under the player, name it the same as a script name, and we add it to the game object. We have a list that contains all of the states that have been created. So we add the state. And finally, we transition to the new state. When you transition to the same state, the second time, all we got to do is get the state from the list and enter that state. When you try to enter a state that's never been entered before, you initialize the state, and then it's the same thing over and over again. And you also want to make sure that whatever you're trying to enter is a physics state. On every update or on every fixed update, it's the current state that gets updated and no other state. If you want to use other states, you got to use the transition function. So if I look at one of the states on ground, Right now, this is a state with the most amount of stuff. When you first enter, we set up the ground speed, and on every fixed update, we walk and we rotate. Notice that we have cancel velocity here, which means you cannot jump while you're in the state. If you do want to jump, you add force, and before that's canceled, we transition to the next state. So if I go to the next state, F12 here. If you remember the previous videos, you would know that you do have to wait for the fixed update to run. I might get rid of this state later, but anyways, as soon as you see the up force, we get rid of the previous torque, and then we go to the next state. So jumping up means you're going up. Eventually, gravity is going to make you fall, and that's when your y velocity becomes a negative number. And when that happens, we move into free fall. Eventually, you're going to hit the ground, and you move into landing. When you enter this state, we get rid of the previous torque, previous force and torque, and we transition back to this state on ground. And now we're back here. Right now, I haven't defined anything for the air movement. So if I play again, you'll see that if I'm in the air, I'm unable to control the character. But I'll define more stuff as I go on. And that's pretty much it. Let me look at the actual game object here, physics states. So in the beginning, we just have check and free fall. But every time you enter a new state, it gets initialized automatically. So that's one way to organize your code. 
You don't have to use a state machine, but you do need some sort of a structure or a pattern that allows you to manage it and allows you to build more stuff on top of that code. So I can now add more physics stuff by adding new states or fixing the current ones. We still have major issues around the edges or with friction, but eventually I'll add the updates. So that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.